welcome again to this particular session. While finishing the last one, we did 3.9 and 3.10, 3.11 and 3.12. These are manageable questions. You can easily do it by yourself. Now I'm going to pick up in this particular session, first of all, 3.13. And this is a pretty strong question. And at the same time, 3.13 and 3.15 are one and same question. Both these questions have struck in the past examinations. So pay attention. It's a quite a nice question. Now, in this particular question, let's begin. H H55 is the name of the purchaser. Bought two tractors from F44. F44 is the name of the vendor. On 1-10-2019, see the starting date, 1st of October 2019, on the following terms. Correct? So, accounting year is starting from 1-10-2019. Pay attention here. 1-10-2019. And when I will go through later on, at the end of the question, just pay attention, I will show it to you. Here it is written that your books are closed on 30th of September every year. Correct? So, that means my first year will end on 30th of September 2020. And here I am supposed to pay the first installment. Correct? My first installment, that is zero installment, is down payment. And at the end of the first year, I am supposed to pay 2,65,000. And remember, we have bought two, tra two tractors. Two tractors, but information is not given in this manner that down payment is 5 lakh each. That means this 5 lakh, this entire information is re related to entire what we call lot of asset that is two trucks in this particular case. So we are supposed to pay the first installment at the end of the first year, second installment at the end of 30th of September 2021. And finally, the third installment on 30th of 9, 2022. So these are the installments. This is down payment, your first installment, second installment, and third installment. Then question has stated that your rate of interest is 10% per annum. Further, it is also given that H55, which is the purchaser, the rate of depreciation is 20% on diminishing balance method. Now the question main line is on 30th of September 2022. Now 30th of September 2022 is the end of the third year, correct? On 30th of September 2022, H5 failed to pay the third installment and upon which F44 repossessed one tractor. So out of two tractor, one is repossessed, one is left, correct? Further, it is given that F44 Limited agreed to leave one tractor with H55 and adjusting the value of the tractor against the amount due, the tractor taken were valued on the basis of 30% depreciation annually on written down value basis. So the tractor which have been repossessed, now in this particular question, on this date repossession has been done and repossession has been done on the basis of 30% and one truck is retained and buyer's rate of depreciation is 20%. So this is the entire information. However, this question differs from the earlier one in the sense that in the last three lines, some more information is given. The balance amount remaining in vendor's account after the above adjustment, that means after the repossession, whatever balance carried down was there in higher vendor account, was paid by the purchaser after three months with interest at the rate of 18%. So this time, whatever balance was there after the repossession, correct? So far, as we have seen, hitherto, we were simply after the repossession, we were simply writing balance carried down. But this time, the question has added something extra, that whatever balance will be there after the repossession process, that balance has been now paid after three months from the date of the repossession. Correct? Now, what is the demand of the question? Whenever in the examination you attend the question, it is very important to go through the demand of the question. That is also very important. Calculate the cash price. Now, in this particular question, you must have noticed that uh, down payment is given, installments are given, that when higher purchase price is given, rate of interest is also given. However, cash price was not given. So, you have to find out the cash price of the tractors and the interest paid with each installment. This is the first thing which we are supposed to do. And second point in this particular question states that we are supposed to prepare asset account, tractor account, and F44 account, that is higher vendor account, in the books of H55. I have already told you so many times that generally only these things are asked in the examination. And further, this is the important line, assuming that books are closed on 30th of September every year. Now, I would love you to actually write the solution, which I am going to do it before you. Is it clear to you? 
it is important that you need to write the solution also. So, first thing which we are going to do, because I have already analyzed the question, correct? You need to keep track of the date that is also very important in this particular question and keep the question before you. Now, 3.13 is the question I am doing and I have already told you this one is absolutely similar to your 3.15. So, under the first step, actually, what we are supposed to do in this particular question is step number A. Because the demand of the question is that we are supposed to find out the cash price. So, obviously, I am going to write cash price. This is our first step. Cash price and besides that, we have to reflect the amount of interest included in each installment. So, cash price and interest. Cash price and interest included. Included in each installment. So this is what question wants us to show and this is what exactly we are showing. You know the entire process when cash price is not given how we have to move about but it's still I will do it for you. First of all write the serial number of the installment and then in the next column write your cash price portion then you have to show your interest amount and finally, you have to write your installment, installment amount. As we know in this particular question, one is down payment and our first installment, then our second installment and then third installment. Now, what is the amount of the installment? We have just seen that amount of the installment. Down payment is actually 5 lakh. Down payment is 5 lakh. Then 2,65,000 we are supposed to pay at the end of the first year. Then 2,45,000 we are supposed to pay at the end of the second year. And at the end of the third year, we will pay 2,75,000 and entire payment will be done. So when cash price is not given so many times, I have already told you, your first target should be to convert your rate of interest which is given at 10% and 10% itself means it is given at 10% on cash price. So indirectly it means you will have to apply the rate 10 by 100 and 10. Is it clear to you? This is the first thing which you will have to do that when you, you have converted your rate of interest given on cash price into higher purchase price because we are not given the cash price. Again, we have to start from the third installment. Correct? So now, first of all, I am going to ask you a very simple question. What is the amount of interest included in this particular installment? What will be your answer? 2,75,000 is the higher purchase price. And into 1 by 11 or 10 by 110, whatever you may like to write, this will be my interest. So interest is equal to 25,000. Correct? So I have computed the amount of interest. I will subtract 25 from 275. I will get 250,000. This is how I am going to find out cash price portion. But I have to begin with the third installment. Now I come to the second installment. First of all, I am going to write the amount of installment that is 245. Now I want to know what is the amount of interest included in it. So in order to find out the amount of interest included in it, first of all, I will write the amount of installment. That means this much of amount I am supposed to pay. Because your second installment is 2,45 lakh, that means you are supposed to pay 245. Correct? This is your second installment. But at the same time, when you are computing interest for second installment, that means your third installment is still due. But don't think your third installment is 2,75 lakh. Your third installment will be considered as 2,50 lakh because when you are in second year, interest hasn't become due for the third year. So that is why your third installment will be considered as 2,50 lakh. So when we are in the second year, we are going to compute the interest on the amount remaining. So in order to find out the total amount remaining, that is the reason we will have to add this amount to this one. Is it clear to you? 2,50,000. So now I can say that when I am at the end of the second year, total remaining amount is equal to, that is equal to 4,95,000. And then I am going to apply the interest rate. Interest rate is 1 by 11 and if I am going to apply the interest will be equal to 45,000. So out of 2,45 now I can say that rate of interest sorry interest is 45 
So quite obviously 2 lakh will be my cash price portion. And similarly, on similar logic, when I am going to compute the interest for the first installment, first of all, I am going to write the amount of installment, which is 2,65,000. Because this amount is still outstanding, this amount is still outstanding because we are in the first year. So that is the reason we have to add all these amounts because interest is always computed on remaining balance. Plus, so I have added 2 lakh, I am going to add 2,50,000. So, your total will be equal to this much, 7,15,000 and you will apply 1 by 11. So, you will get 65,000 as your interest. So, your interest will be equal to 65,000. Out of 2, 65, 65,000 is the interest. It means your cash price portion is 2 lakh. Is it clear to you or not? Right, sir. Now, what about the down payment? There will be no interest in it. So, entire amount will be considered as cash price. Correct? Now, you will add down payment plus all these cash price portions. You will get 11,50,000. Now, remember one thing. This 11,50,000 will be considered as cash price of two trucks because information is not given in this particular question in a segregated manner. So that is the reason, just to be assured of yourself, so that you shouldn't commit what we call any mistake later on, it is better to write in the beginning itself, cash price of one truck will be equal to how much? Of one truck will be equal to 11 lakh 11 lakh 50,000 into 1 by 2. We will have to divide it by 2. There are two trucks. So, 5 lakh 75,000. Now, we may say that each truck is commanding cash price. Is it clear to you? Now, after this particular step, the next one which we are supposed to do under partial reposition is to find out value of one truck repossessed. So, value of one truck. Value of one truck which is repossessed, we have to find it out. And which is not a very tough nut to crack. However, we have to find the value from the perspective of the vendor and from the perspective of the purchaser, as we normally do, so that we are able to find out the amount of loss at the initial stage itself. First of all, we will write here cost price. You can write cash price also because it is cost price from the angle of or from the perspective of the purchaser that is equal to 5,75,000 we will write this cost price and now we shall compute the amount of depreciation at 30 percent so depreciation for first year if I am going to find out the depreciation for the first year what will be the amount of depreciation so amount of depreciation at 30 percent will be equal to 1,72,500 one lakh seventy two thousand five hundred and then i will subtract five lakh from five lakh seventy five thousand one lakh seventy two thousand five hundred the remaining amount will be equal to four lakh two thousand five hundred four lakh two thousand five hundred remember one thing default has been made on 30th of september that is except 30th of september 2022 the story began from 1 1 2000 1 10 2019 that means lifespan of this particular question is three years. So we shall have to compute the depreciation for three years. So depreciation. Now 2500 Then you add, uh, uh, sorry, compute 30% of this one. That will be equal to 1,20,750. So I will subtract 1,20,750. 2,81,750. Is the balance amount. Now depreciation for third year, if I am going to compute the depreciation for the third year, the amount of depreciation for the third year will be equal to 84,000. Let me compute it into 30%. 84,525. 84,525. So now I am going to subtract this 84,525 from this figure. 281750 that comes to 197225. 197225.
So this is the this is how we are going to find out at what value vendor took back the truck. He took back the truck at this particular value. Now, what was the value of this truck in the opinion of higher purchaser? Remember one thing, the depreciation rate of purchaser happens to be 20%. Now, purchaser is going to apply first of all depreciation of 20%. That will be equal to 1,15,000. Now, I will subtract 1,15,000 from this figure. I will get 4,60,000. 92,000 will be depreciation for the next year. 92,000. Now you subtract 92 from 460,000. You will get 368,000. 368,000. Now 368,000 into 20% will be equal to 73,600. So I compute 73,600. I will subtract 73,600 from this figure to get 2,94,400. Correct? That means in the opinion of the purchaser, this value which, this truck which was being repossessed or which is repossessed, correct, ha had a value of 2,94,400, but vendor took it back only for 1,97,225. So we may say actually that loss is equal to 97,175. This is your amount of loss. Is it clear to you? That means you have already determined the amount of loss in this particular question. Now, question is also asked in the books of the purchaser. So, this will be my next step. Books of purchaser. Books of purchaser. Now, books of purchaser, remember one thing, purchaser is H44. You can write the name H44 or whatever it is. Now, as far as purchaser is concerned, the purchaser is going to prepare one tractor account and then he is going to prepare higher vendor account. First, I will prepare the F44 account that is higher vendor account. That is higher vendor account. Name of the higher vendor is actually F44. In order to find out the in order to prepare this particular account, I will need a space. I will need, sorry, scale, not space. Okay, first we'll finish up this particular account and then I will prepare tractor account. In order to prepare this particular account, what we are supposed to do? First of all, I will write the date that is 1-10-2019 and on 1-10-2019 we bought tractors, correct? Tractors or trucks, whatever it is. Tractors account. Two tractors for 11,50,000 cash price, which is basically the cost price for purchase. On 1-10-2019, obviously I am going to pay the down payment. The amount of down payment as we saw earlier is equal to how much? The down payment was 5 lakh I think, right. So 5 lakh is your down payment. Then we will reach the end of the first year, 30th of 9, 2020. We will pass the entry for interest. Remember one thing, interest in your first installment which you computed was 65,000. It is written over here, correct? 65,000. So you will write over here 65,000. Then you will pay on this particular date, 30th of September 2020, your first installment. And the amount of your first installment you have already seen, first installment was 2 lakh something, 2 lakh 65,000. Quite obviously now you are supposed to balance this particular account. If you are going to balance, your balance carried down will be equal to 4,50,000. Balance carried down is equal to 4,50,000. So as far as first year is concerned, your task is over. You will move over to the next year. Please take care of the date. It is very important. Now 30th of September is the end of the first year. So next year will begin from 1st of October 2020. Then write the balance amount. Balance amount is equal to 4,50,000. Come to the end of this particular accounting year, current year. 
Now, current year will end on 30th of September 2021, isn't it or not? Now, interest, what was the amount of interest? 45,000, I think so. So, you are going to write here 45,000, correct? On this particular date, we are going to make the second installment, 30th of September 2021. Your second installment, I think, was 2,45,000, if I am not wrong. 2,45,000. You have to note down it also, correct? Because solution which is already with you might be a little bit different or might have been done in a little bit different manner. So, you know, you may otherwise get confused. So, better to have the same methodology which we are following so far. 2,45. So, now we are go going to write here balance carried down. What will be the amount of balance carried down? That is 2,50,000. So, our second year task is also, now we come to the final year. Now, in the final year, first of all, I will write 1st of October 2021. I will write here balance brought down. Balance brought down happens to be 2,50,000. Now, we will come to the end of the year, 30th of September 2022, wherein we are going to put, first of all, interest. Interest amount happens to be how much? That is 25,000, which we computed earlier. Okay. Now, you have to pay attention here, that is on 30th of September 2022, we were supposed to pay the third installment. Unfortunately, we did not pay. Correct? So, on account of that, hire vendor got angry, you can say so, and he took back one tractor. So, at what value he took back the tractor, you are supposed to write it over here. So, you are going to write here. tractor and you have already computed that right in bracket working note number what whatever working note number was there you put the working note number two or whatever it is now at what value he took back the tractor we have just computed over here one lakh ninety seven thousand two one lakh ninety seven two two five so at this particular value he took took back one lakh ninety seven thousand two hundred and twenty five now, normally what we do after the reposition, as I was talking about earlier, normally, question, till up to this particular point, we were simply closing, we were simply closing the account by writing balance carried down. Isn't it or not? This is what we were doing so far or hitherto till up to this particular point. So, 2,75,000 minus 1,97,225, your balancing figure will be 77,000. 775. Please check it also. Correct? Now, in this particular question, we have to move a little bit further also. Why? Because question has stated that this amount has been paid by the purchaser at some interest, I think it was 18% interest, after 3 months. Now, if I am going to compute 3 months from this particular date, Quite obviously, it will be equal to 31st of 12, 2022. That means three months after 30th of September. So, date will be 31st of 12, 2022. But before, before I write the date, before I write the date, first of all, first of all, sometimes this pen no, creates lots of problems. Finally, so I will write here 30th of September 2022. First of all, I will write this write this balance as balance brought forward 77,775. Now, this balance need to be paid after three months. So, first I will add three months to it, that being 31st of 12, 2022. But first of all, I will have to pass the entry for interest due for three months. I will have to compute interest on this amount because this amount is paid along with interest. So, 77,775 multiply it with 18% and that is equal to 3 by 12. Now, I will have to use the calculator. Just wait. So, it is equal to 3,500. So, 3,500 as per my calculation. Now, whatever amount is there, you simply pay it off. Correct? 
So you will write here on 31st of December, 31st of 12, 2022, you will write here bank and the total will be equal to 81,275. So balance amount is paid. This is your balancing figure. So this is something extra in this particular question, correct? Now, if you intend to actually prepare the tractor account also, I will prepare that also. Now, tractor account. In order to prepare the tractor account, where's the scale? I think this much is enough. So we will prepare the tractor account. In this particular question, first of all, in order to prepare the tractor account, you write here 110-2019. This is the date on which you bought tractor from the hire vendor and you are going to write here to hire vendor 11,50,000. Two trucks have been bought. Obviously, now you are going to reach the end of the first year, that is 30th of September 2020, whereupon you are going to provide the amount of depreciation. Now, depreciation, if you remember, 20%, 20% of 11,50,000 will be equal to 2,30,000. Now, you are going to write here balance carried down. 230 minus 11,50, that is equal to 9,20,000. So, as far as first year task is concerned, that is over. Correct? Now, we will come to the beginning of the next year, that is 110-2020, balance brought down, 9,20,000, 9,20,000. So, 9,20,000 you are going to write and then you write here 30th of September 2021, that is end of the second year, once again you are going to provide depreciation. Depreciation is on written down value basis. So 920 into 20%, 184. Balance carried down. Now balance carried down will be equal to 736,000. Second year task is also over. Now we come over to 110, 2021. Once again, balance brought down 7,36,000. 7,36,000. We will reach the end of the year, 30th of 9, 2022. We will provide the depreciation, first of all, as we normally do. Depreciation will be equal to 1,47,200. Correct? Now, on this particular date, the higher vendor took back the Tractors. So I will write here higher vendor. And higher vendor took them at 1,97,225. This figure we have already through our working note. Correct? This figure we are already having. And we have already computed the amount of loss, profit and loss account. What was the amount of loss which we computed earlier? I think it was 91,725. 97,175, I think. Let me check it out. We computed the amount of loss here, correct, 97,175. 97,175. 175. Now, balance carried down. You can simply take it as balancing figure and balance carried down. What does it mean? The balance carried down means value of one truck, which is still in possession of the, which is still in possession of purchaser. However, we also know the value of this particular balance in advance. How? Because, just pay attention. You might be wondering, sir, why you did not compute at this particular, in this particular question, value of truck retained. Because generally after computing value of reposition, value of the asset repossessed, we generally also compute the value of the trucks retained. Now we know that one truck is retained by the purchaser. 
correct and purchaser is having one truck so quite obviously the value will be equal to 294400 suppose if i am going to do the computation first of all i am going to write cost 575 because that that is the cost of one truck then i am going to provide depreciation so same figure we will get 294400 so that is the reason i avoided in this particular question computation of value of the truck retained 94400 you can also get it you can also get it as a balancing figure also if you balance it that you will get the same answer is it clear to you so this was interesting question as i told you correct then after that after that after that so slowly we are coming to the end of this particular chapter now next question next question 3.14 is very simple question so i need not require to do you can easily manage this question of your own correct simple question and then 3.15 this is what i was trying to tell you that the question 3.13 and 3.15 are absolutely same you can see here 5 lakh, 2 lakh, 65, 245, 275, and this time two tractors. So, same question. So, this question is also over. It got printed twice because this question has come in the examination two times. 3.16, you can manage it. And now, this is the last question of this particular section 3.17, correct? And you can see actually all these questions which we did today actually questions of such pattern of late are striking in the examination with high velocity so we come over to this particular question ship kumar in this case bought two cars from fair value motors private limited although the figures are different but question is on similar pattern correct and these cars have been bought on this particular date 1 for 2012 and on the following terms so this time we have down payment first installment second installment and third installment because in this particular case the story is beginning from 1 4 2012 correct so our first year will end on 31st of 3 2013 our second year will end on 31st of 3 2014 and quite obviously our third year will end on 31st of 3 2015. Now question further says that Ship Kumar provides depreciation at the rate of 25%. So purchaser's rate of depreciation is 25% and on 31st of 3 2015. So on this date default has been made. So on 31st of 3 2015 Ship Kumar failed to pay the third installment upon which Fair Value Motors Private Limited, that is the name of the vendor, repurchased one car. So one car has been repurchased. So you can say repurchase and repurchase has been done on 40% depreciation annually. 40% depreciation annually on written down value balance. Correct. Both are having written down value and one car which is retained by Ship Kumar and Ship Kumar's rate of depreciation is 25%. And rate of interest in this particular question is actually 10% per annum. Correct? Similar to the last question, here also it is written that whatever balance you will get in the vendor's account after the repossession will have to be paid off within next three months with interest of 20% per annum. You are required to and same things are asked in this particular question also. Now see here, in your solution which you might be having, correct? You might have been given what we call calculation of cash price. In this manner also we can compute the cash price, correct? But uh, still I would love you to actually just, and with that we'll come to the end of this particular section, right? So this section, the 17 question we have incorporated in it. And in the first section we have, in the, in the third section, this is the third section, correct? In the first section itself we had near about 25 questions. In the second section also five or six questions so you must have noticed all these things correct okay now let me also pull the question seat before me so that every time i need not require to look at the question that becomes a little bit difficult question number 3.17 i am talking about now isn't it or not 3.17 okay let's take it 3.17 
So similar to the last one, in this particular question also we are supposed to actually compute first of all cash price and interest. Isn't it or not? So I am going to write here cash price. Cash price. Now what will be the amount of cash price in this particular cash? Cash price and interest. Cash price and interest in each installment of books. In the examination, you must write cash price and determination of interest in each installment. Similar to the last question, we will adopt the same approach. I think that approach will be liked by you. Cash price portion and then interest and amount of installment. First of all, write zero installment, first installment, second installment and third installment. Zero installment means your down payment. The down payment is 6 lakh. Your first amount, first installment is 4 lakh 20 thousand. And then you have 4 lakh 90 thousand. This is your second installment, 4 lakh 90 thousand. And finally, your third installment happens to be 5 lakh 50 thousand. 5 lakh 50 thousand. Correct? We will adopt the same approach. Correct? Your rate of interest will be 10 by 110 because rate of interest 10% obviously means it is on cash price. We have converted it into higher purchase price. We will start with the first installment. The first installment is 5,50,000 because we know that this particular installment comprises of some interest and comprises of some portion of cash price portion. Now, what, what is the amount of interest included in this particular installment? For that, you will have to show the calculation. 5,50,000 into into obviously 1 by 11 or 10 by 110 whatever you may like to write your amount of interest will be equal to 55,000 amount of interest will be equal to 55 so out of 5 lakh is it 50,000 or 55,000 let me do the calculation I think it is 50,000 11 you know 11 fives are 50 it will be equal to 55,000 50,000. So, that means our cash price portion is equal to 5 lakh. Correct? And now we will come over to the second installment. First of all, write the amount of installment. Once you have written the amount of installment, your next target should be to write, first of all, 4 lakh 90,000. And then, add the succeeding installment, that is 5 lakh. Because when we are in the second year, when we are in the second year, correct, in this installment interest hasn't become due. That is why this installment will be considered as 5 lakh and not as 5 lakh 50. So some of you might wonder, sir, why we are not adding 550 instead of 5 lakh. So that is the reason. Because when you are in second year, in fact, this amount and this amount you can say is same. So that is the reason we add only cash price portion. Now, after adding it, you multiply it with 1 by 11. That is 9 lakh 90. 9 lakh 90 into 1 by 11 will be equal to 90,000 if I am not wrong. 90,000. So, subtract 90 from 4 lakh 90 to get your cash price portion, which happens to be 4 lakh in this particular case. So once you have determined the amount of interest for third and second, now you will come over to the first installment. As far as first installment is concerned, what you are supposed to do? First of all, write the amount of installment. Once you have written the amount of installment, now compute the interest. In order to compute the interest, again you will have to write the amount of installment. Now think of the fact that you are in the first year. That means this amount and this amount is still remaining. This amount and this amount is still remaining. So that is the reason you will have to add it back. 4 lakh. You will add 4 lakh. You will add 5 lakh. After adding them, multiply it with 1 by 11 and you will get the amount of interest. Interest will be equal to 1 lakh 20 thousand. So 420 minus 120 will give you 4 lakh once again. And then your down payment in this particular question is, is 6 lakh, right. 6 lakh is your down payment. 
no interest correct so now you can add all these items 6 plus 4 10 and how much sorry i have written here 4 lakh just wait 420 minus 120 is 3 lakh in fact So 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 4 is equal to 13, 13 plus 5 is equal to 18. So 18 lakh is your cash price. So cash price of one car, so cash price of one car will be equal to cash price of one car. Cash price of one car will be equal to 9 lakh. Obviously, so 18 lakh into 1 by 2. So now we have determined the cash price of one car. Because we have determined the cash price of one car, we can proceed with the next step now. The next step will be value of car repurposed. Value of car repurposed. Now value of the car repurposed vendor purchaser and of course amount of loss which you will determine. Again in this question installment a third installment default has been made at the time of third installment correct so because default has been made for the third installment so obviously that mean in this particular case we shall have to find out depreciation for three years so first of all i will write here value of car or cost of car whatever you may like to write value of car which we computed that is 9 lakh value of one car so first of all you will write here 9 lakh you will also write here 9 lakh think of the depreciation now depreciation rate of vendor is 40 percent this time and rate of purchaser is 25 percent so first we will consider vendor so depreciation at the rate of 40% of 9 lakh will be equal to 3,60,000. Subtract 3,60,000 from 9 lakh to get 5,40,000. Again subtract depreciation at the rate of 40%. That will be equal to 2,16,000. 2,16,000. Subtract 2,16 from 5,40 now you will get 3,24,000. Then, finally, 40% of 3,24,000 will be equal to 1,29,600. So, this is the value at which reposition was done, 1,94,400. Now, what was the value? From the point of view of purchase, 25% is the depreciation. 2,25,000 will be the amount of depreciation, if I am not wrong. Correct? Then, we will get 6,75,000. Again, 25% you write here. 1,68,750, I think. Then you will get 5,6250. Now 25%126562.50. So this is the value in the opinion of purchaser 379657. Point five zero eight seven sorry fifteen seven so three seven nine six eight seven this is three seven nine 
37 I will write it again for you so that no confusion is there. That is equal to three seven nine six eight seven point five zero. Now you take the difference of these two amounts, that difference will be equal to I think one eight five. 1852870. So you have determined the amount of loss. Just for the sake of writing, actually, I am writing, otherwise, there is no need. Fourth, value of one truck, value of one truck retained. Value of one truck retained means this truck is still in the hands of buyer. Buyer is having one truck. Now see here, we have already done the calculation for one truck because if, the, if we are going to compute the value of one truck with us, what we are going to do? First of all, we are going to write the value of the truck 9 lakh and we are going to apply 25% depreciation. So we will get this value. So what that is, that is the point actually I am trying to tell you. Correct? So that means the truck which is in our hand, its value is three three seven nine six eight seven point five zero. Is it clear to you? You need not require to write it again. Then fifth books of purchaser. As far as purchaser is concerned, pur purchaser is going to prepare hire vendor account and of course car account. Purchaser, the name is Shiv Kumar in this case. Actually, you must note it down because I have already told you last three questions solutions. There are some printing errors otherwise. So it could be a possibility. So that is the reason I want to play safe. That is why I am solving. Actually, you can solve it by yourself off without any doubt now. Now in the books of higher vendor, first of all, we are going to write on 1-4-2012. This is the date. Actually, I was searching it 1-4-2012. We bought car. This time the cash price of two car is equal to 18 lakhs. Then quite obviously I am going to write one for 2000 on one for 2012 bank account down payment. Down payment was made for two cars 6 lakh. Correct? 6 lakh was the amount isn't it or not? Right. Then we will come to the end of the first year on 31st of 3, 2013 and we are going to write interest. We computed interest in the first installment and it was 1,20,000. Out of 420, the installment amount was 420, 120 was the interest. And 31st of 3, 2013, what you are going to write, you are going to write to bank. That is your first installment. Now, as far as your first installment is concerned, just a moment ago, I told you 420. Then you are going to balance it down. Balance carried down, obviously, 9 lakh. Close it. Move to the second year. 1-4-2013. Balance brought down 9 lakh. What is the amount of interest? At the end of the 31st, you will reach the end of the year, 31st of 3, 2014, your interest will be equal to 90,000. You can look into the table or you can just straight away compute 10% of this. Because we have determined the cash price now, 
90,000. So 31st of 3, 2014, we will make the payment sec for second installment. Second installment, 4,90,000. Then balance carried down. 990 minus 490, that is equal to 5 lakh. Second year task is also over. We come to the beginning of the third year. Balance brought down is equal to 5 lakh. Now, you will write the amount of interest 31st of 3, 2016. Correct? Just wait. Dates have been written correctly. That is why I am instead of 15 because there was no 16 in this case. Regarding dates, you have to be absolutely clear. So, when you will come to the end of the third year, your interest will be 50,000. Now, in the final year, 31st of 3, 2015, first of all, I will write to bank, although it is not needed, just for better understanding. We were supposed to pay the third installment, which we didn't. On account of that, as I told you casually earlier, the vendor actually took back one, uh, one of the truck, correct? So, you will write here, uh, to, what is, what, what is the name of the asset? That is car actually. And the value which we have already determined is equal to how much? What is the amount of 1,94,400? At this value, let me check it up also. 1,94,400, correct? Now, what is the balance amount? Now, I will compute the balance amount. 5,50 minus 1,94,400 will give me 3,73,000. How much it will be equal to? It seems calculator will be needed. 5,50,000. Interest in the first year was uh, right, 50,000. And I will subtract minus 1,94,400. 3,55,600 it is. 3,55,600. Now I have computed it with the help of calculator. Similar to the last one, first of all, you will write here, 1 for 2015, balance brought down 3,55,600. Correct? 3,55,600. Now, three months later, Three months later means 30th of June 2015. First of all, you will make the entry for interest due. What will be the amount of interest? 3,55,600 into rate of interest this time is 20% into 3 by 12 for three months. You will compute the interest into 20% divided by 4. 17,780, 17,780 as per my calculation. Now I will add 17,780 plus 355,600 that comes to 373,380. So I will pay it on 30th of June 2015 and I will write here to bank final payment. So, balance amount paid. So, you have paid the balance. 
all the question which we have done today are very vital from the examination point of view. Remember one thing, correct? These are very vital questions which we did. And in between, I have given you now some questions which you should be in a position to do. So, correct? So, all these are very important questions of the day. And obviously, next time when I'm going to meet, most probably we shall be able to complete the chapter. So, till then, it's a very lovely, lovely goodbye from you. Oh, 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 oh,